Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to share a personal story today that includes a teaching on healing. The title of this teaching is Appealing and Presenting Your Case in the Heaven's Court for Your Healing. It's going to be an addition for some into your prayer life. But I want to put things into balance and perhaps give you some revelation into what's going on in heaven in the courtroom of God. God is a God of laws that governs His kingdom on heaven and on earth. And God sits on the mercy seat, the judgment seat, the place of, of instruction, which has a mercy seat in a tabernacle in heaven. Now, right now, He is seated there. In the ark, it contains the tablets of the law the Ten Commandments and other things. And this is the presence of God manifesting from this place, issuing justice for the oppressed and correcting all things that are out of alignment through divine decree in history, in nations, and in our own hearts. On behalf of all of His creation and the saints. So I'd like to give you a, a picture today from Scripture of, of how one way to go into this court and appropriately present your case respectfully and humbly Micah 6.8 says, What does God desire, O man, but that you act justly according to His laws, that you love mercy, because He's on the mercy seat, and that you walk humbly before God in His presence. We sang about His presence and the overcoming by His presence. We all, by the way, just a comment. We were singing to be overcome by His presence. People talk about being overcomers. Well, let me tell you, overcomers are only those who have been overcome by His presence. The presence has come over us. We don't really do very much for that. David said, your, your waves and breakers have come over and broke. They've caught up with me and... and got me from behind. So while we were worshiping, I, I, I sensed the Spirit say, you want to be an overcomer, you make sure my presence has overcome you so that you can come over. Just, a, just an aside, uh, if I get into some different things, just flow with me. The Ten Commandments in the Ark are the prophetic of the future kingdom to come. A lot of people say, oh, well, the commandments of God. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm under grace. Well, the grace is in the commandments of God because the Ten Commandments are what is going to be fulfilled in the kingdom that's coming, not past. They're also the righteous way that's going to be manifest as Christ is formed in us. We're going to comply and fulfill the Ten Commandments, aren't we? Jesus didn't come to abolish any law at all. But he came to fulfill them all for us that we might walk justly, love mercy, and, be, and walk humbly. So I'd like to tell you about a personal story of healing that I experienced when we were gone in Nashville. It happened in the Grand Old Opry. I don't know if you know the Grand Old Opry, but it is a sight. It's a whole city within a, within a city. and Anyway, I was very sick for quite a while. And uh, not wanting to disappoint my grandson, my daughter, I overcame and got out of bed and went to the Grand Ole Opry for hours. 
Well, there was one point in which I was fading. My, my wife asked me, are you going to pass out? I just was totally about to fall. And, and during this process and right before this process, the, the Holy Spirit had revealed to me how to pray for my condition. And it happened like this. He, he said, are you healed? What does the law say? The law says, by his wounds I have been healed. In fact, the Old Testament law said that I'm the Lord that heals you. And then he said, well, if you're healed, <coughs> what's making you sick? Or actually said, who's making you sick? And I said, well, my enemy's making me sick. Oh, he's accusing you of being sick? And the Lord led me to the seventh commandment of the Ten Commandments. And what does it say? Do not bear false witness. And the Spirit said to me, Satan is bearing a false witness against you, against my law. My law says you are healed. And he has come before and said, you're sick. Now, I want you to bring this case into my courtroom, and I want to adjudicate your healing. Just bear with me. I'm just taking you on a journey here. I've got scriptures for all of it, but I just want to take you on what I went through. Mm -hmm. and, and then he began to, to, to show me what to do in the court of God. I didn't pray. <coughs> I had to allow my attorney, my advocate my intercessor to show me how to behave and how to present my case because he never loses a case. Jesus is called the intercessor. The Holy Spirit is called the advocate, the attorney. It's a legal term. He wants to stand in for you. He doesn't want you to blab in front of the court. He wants to present your case in such a way that it is clear before God's court that someone is bearing a false witness. How many times in the Word does the Lord say, I hate false witnesses? I hate false testimony. Why? Because it goes against the core of His heart, which is justice, especially for the oppressed, downtrodden, sick, widow, children, this is the essential core of the heart of God. And all of the law addresses that. So I, I, I began to formulate my case as I was walking around the Grand Ole Opry. You may think this is funny, but it's not funny. I'd had enough. And prayer didn't work. There was another thing I had to learn from God and walk humbly. And that was, why don't you take your case to the judge and let him judge it? If there's a false witness against you and the law of God, the heart of God has been broken, well then don't you think that he's able to, to issue a decree in that court and cancel and finish that? I said, yes, Lord, show me what to do. I'd like to turn to, well, Psalm 119, 153, just a couple scriptures I'll throw out because people love to, uh, to have the word on it. Even in a story, you can have your word on it, can't you? 
Psalm 119. If you go through Psalm 119, which I did afterwards, God was teaching me all this and bringing up all the scriptures that I'd known. And I went, oh my gosh, this, this whole thing, this whole Bible, this whole thing is like being in court. Let me just throw out a few words that are found hundreds of times in scripture. Testimony. Law. Witness. False witness. Justice. Judge. Advocate. Accuser. Accused, mercy, appeal, plead. Those are all court, used in court. And all that, I began to see a missing piece that I'd known was there in the wings, but I, how to apply it. I was walking around, not feeling well at all, and I needed an application, not a lecture. So Psalm 119, is full of the foundation of presenting truth and how to approach the Lord. I'd like to just turn to one verse, 153. Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my case and redeem me. Receive me according to your word. Plead my case. Now, David, we'll, we'll go into one of his Psalms just to bring some points out in a minute. But the more I went through the book of Psalms, the more I realized, oh, David, David, David. He was pleading. He was presenting his case before God in his life continually for God to judge and give him justice upon his enemies, sickness and other situations in his family life and in his kingship. Defend my cause and redeem me. There is a defense from God that's necessary for redemption. So now I, I pray just a little differently about, about things. The law of the Lord includes all the announcements of his will. It embraces the Ten Commandments and all the legislations of Moses. Whew. All of the teaching of the prophets, all of the words of Christ himself, and all of the apostolic words, it is the entire will of God given for the government and justice of your life. Government involves justice in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Righteousness is a word for justice. Jesus supplied us with all of the means to appropriate a favorable ruling in the courtroom of God. We will never get an unfavorable ruling. You feel unrighteous? Jesus has made you righteous so you can stand in the court. You do not come in with an orange prison suit on and in shackles and take the witness stand. Does not exist. There are no ex-cons in the kingdom. That's done with. By his death we have been justified and made righteous forever because wrongdoing is death and Jesus gave us a new birth into a new life that we are righteous, we can go into courtroom and say, Lord, consider my case. I 
am sick. The accuser is telling me I'm sick. And your law tells me I'm healed. What is going on here, Lord? I present to you two exhibits. You know how the, they have to prove it. They have to present evidence. So as I'm walking around the Grand Old Opry, the Lord says, what exhibit are you going to present me for your case? And I said, exhibit A is the blood of Jesus. And I have an exhibit B to present before your honor. The broken body of Christ by whose wounds I am healed. Now I was only quoting the law. I wasn't making my own words up. Knowing the law of God will save you when you have to go to court. Now the enemy knows the word of God and quoted it to Jesus a few times when he met him in the desert. Friends, that was a legal meeting. That was a, that was a legality going on there. The accuser was accusing the judge of all men and all the judge of all men said was the law. Let's turn to uh, Daniel chapter 7. So I was getting somewhere. I was sitting down in the Grand Ole Opry, um, as sick as I could be and still be uh, walking around. But, the, but I was having this ongoing sort of teaching with, with, with the Lord. I, he was taking me into, into legal legal aid school or whatever you want to call it and I was beginning to see that that he wanted me to adjudicate my sickness in court and so Daniel 7 of course um, came to mind I didn't have my Bible with me I was just stumbling around wanting some relief And smiling. Daniel 7. Now I just want to give you a picture. Daniel is giving us, a, describing a picture. Beginning verse 9. Now he's having visions. He, he's having visions. He, he's prophetic seeing. And verse 9 says, I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated his garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, his wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. <coughs> thousands upon thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. Oh, my goodness. Now, the, the jury is thousands and ten thousands and ten thousands. I mean, this courtroom is packed. It's packed. And the judge comes in and sits down. You know the procedure in our earthly courtrooms. Please stand for, for the honor of the judge is coming to be seated. And he sits down. So Daniel is in, in, is in a courtroom of heaven, whether or not it's the only one, doesn't tell us, but it's certainly something big is about to happen. Verse 21. I was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them. So the, there was an enemy present in the court. <coughs> He's bringing his case before the saints, before the judge, against the saints. And he was prevailing against them. I guess he was uh, a pretty good attorney. 
Satan is a very good legalist. He'll get you all cornered. And mentally, he'll say, see, <laughs> you deserve this. See, you did. This. See, you see this. And he is called the accuser of the brethren. That's one of his main names. When you are accused, you are being falsely accused. Until, until the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Verse 26, But the court shall be seated and they shall take away the enemy's dominion and consume and destroy it. And the, then the kingdom and dominion and greatness and kingdom of the, of the kingdoms under the whole of heaven shall be given to his people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. I'm giving you that example in that picture to show you that there is a heavenly court and that in that court things are decided and in that court cases are presented and in that court there is opposition to, to me being healed. But because I know Jesus died for me and I have the exhibit of his blood against all accusations, I, I present that. So, so here I was walking around, not feeling well, and something in me enabled me to say, Lord, judge of all, I humbly come before you and I present my case. I am not praying. I am presenting my case. And my case is I have been falsely accused and it's manifesting in my body. And the accuser has no evidence. He has no exhibit except me. An earthly court would throw that case out for lack of evidential. The evidentiary hearing wouldn't even happen. But we have the evidence of the sacrifice of Jesus for our healing. That because he was wounded, we are healed. That is not, <clears throat> that is not a, a, that's a law. So I took that into the courtroom, so to speak, it was just kind of a feeling like what you get when you're really in prayer and you're talking to God. But, but, but I was, I'd had enough. I said, Lord, I'm, in, I'm going into your courtroom. You're the judge. I am appealing to you on the basis of legalism right now. And the false accusations have to be dropped according to the evidence that I'm presenting to you. And that... And that when the false accusations are dropped, I'll be healed. Well, guess what? I was able to get up from where I was sitting. And I told Pastor Cheryl about this later. I was able to get up and take some breaths. And I was able to walk. And I had the strength to go through the rest of my day. So I said... Wow, this works. <laughs> it's based on the word. It's based on the law. My opposer and my accuser who manifests physically and opposes the work of Jesus' lifeblood, his accusations were thrown out of that court and restitution, see, there's also a law of restitution. See, you study Deuteronomy, I'm telling you, you get so much revelation about how to act. The law of restitution says that, that if my ox falls in your pit and dies, you owe me two oxes because your pit should have been covered. That's in the law. You go ahead, go back and read it. That's a, that's a, that's a law of God. 
Now that's applicable in Christ Jesus to you and me now. So I say, okay, I was accused of that and this happened, now I want greater health. See, so the enemy becomes a debtor to the law of God in my life, in that area. A debtor to the court. Just a couple more things here. Because injustices are happening at a greater rate in the world today, God is releasing new, new revelation about the court of heaven. Let me say this again. Because of the increase of injustices that are manifesting in the world, on your news, on your television, on the internet, and in every nation, God is releasing fresh revelation on how to behave in the courts of God. How many know revelation increases until Jesus comes? God releases revelation on different things. We've had intercessory revelations. We've had prophetic revelations. We've had all these different ways of how to pray. But in, in these days, God is releasing how to go into the court of God and behave. So I'm just presenting that to you as a possibility that I discovered. We have come to Mount Zion to the judge of all. How many love that scripture from Hebrews? For you have not come to Mount uh, to Sinai, you've come to Zion, to the judge of all. Well, where does the judge sit? Order in the courtroom. Here comes the judge. Boom. You have come to Zion. So Zion is a place where the judge sits. You have come to the sprinkled blood that speaks the testimony better than the blood of man. You see, when I presented Exhibit A, and I literally did this, I literally did this in my, in my th inside, I was going, inside, in my brain, in my heart, I was going, Lord, I, I present to you with my attorney, the Holy Spirit, I present to you Exhibit A, the blood of Jesus that is, speaks. Let him testify. Let the blood speak for me. We've come to Mount Zion, a place of God's justice. It's, it's, it's the place where we go for justice, for oppression. For time's sake, uh, I, I don't want to go through all of Psalm 35, but read it on your own. Because Psalm 35, David prays and appeals to God. And David's in a bad way. <laughs> It's okay to be in a bad way, but, but, but I didn't want to stay there. I wanted, I wanted to effectively present. Um, I needed an effective strategy to present this thing to God because something was out of whack. I'll just give you a few things to pull out of Psalm 35 on your own. David prays and appeals to God's justice in the law for the following. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. That God would fight against his enemies so as to disable them to not hurt him. And God would defeat the, their designs against him. David appealed to God that he would take hold of shield and buckler for he is a man of war. David appealed to God that he would stand up and be his help. David appealed to God that God would stop the ways of his enemies that they might not overtake him as he fled from them. This model prayer is a type of appeal we can present against our persecutors and our enemies, that God would restrain them and stop their way according to his law and his justice. See, this is not emotionalism in the courtroom. This is not emotionalism. We, we've had a lot of cases in the last year where we're broadcast from courtrooms, and they're very emotional. This is not emotional. This is legal. Yeah. This is legal. By his wounds, I'm healed. I... I want, 
I want to present that against false accusation that I'm not healed. There's something very refreshing about that. I tried to get this down to just a few pages of notes, but... Spiritual victory is won or lost in the courtroom of divine law. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is big. This is huge. We should be rejoicing about this. Spiritual victory is won or lost in the courtroom of divine law. Oh, please, God, you know I love you. You know I love you. You know what I've... Accept my sacrifices and my offers, Lord. Okay. So this is not that. That's great. That's wonderful. There's a time for that. But, but, but the divine law will win our case. Hallelujah. We are on the right side of the law. Because we're justified and made righteous by Jesus. And he fulfilled the laws for me that I might walk in the fulfillment of all of them. But sometimes I must follow the advice of my attorney and appeal. <laughs> you got it? The attorney being the Holy Ghost in Christ Jesus. We take our case in prayer and plea for healing knowing which of God's laws to appeal to in the exhibiting body and blood that speaks for us. My healing was securely founded on the truth of a law. And I was sure to win my case in the courtroom. God still judges justly according to his word. I'm almost done. There's one more thing the Spirit wants me to say and I'm trying to get to it. To help describe what I went through, I think, for, for lack of a better word, court, courtroom praying, I don't have a word for this process, but let me try to just define it simply. The specific request for justice and judgment and relief for damages at the conclusion of a complaint or petition. Should I repeat that? Please, this is just, I'm just trying to grasp this process. Courtroom praying is the specific request for justice and judgment and relief for damages at the conclusion of a complaint or petition. How does that sound? Is that helpful? Is that helpful? Because I, this is how I feel. I feel that this, th this healing... Now, I wasn't completely healed. At that moment, my symptoms did not completely go, but they went so this, my strength equaled my day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's another law. So, so there was a demonstration enough in me that I had gotten somewhere in court. How long do some cases last? <coughs> now, now my, my, my case didn't last long because my exhibit was so clear and powerful. But, but to base my healing on a sure testimony of Jesus and to go through the process of almost reassuring myself and getting a, a strong standing 
and testimony in that that brought a, a further advancement of my health. So my petition had a, a, another foundation, another addition for healing. In conclusion, God is a God of governments, authorities. God is a God of organization in the church. God has set up an order, a way of adjudicating, a way of justice, that we are the justice people. We are people who will walk in justice. We are people who will walk in, in the light of the law for the oppressed. This is what is coming for the church. This is what the church is going to be walking in. There will be addi additions to how we present ourselves as a body before the Lord and in the courts of God. There will be an understanding, a deeper understanding of his ways that Moses had. All Israel went to Moses to be judged every day. Can you imagine they had thousands of people lined up at his door every morning his, at his tent until his father-in-law came to him and said, Hey man, you need a lot of lower courts here. Would you appoint... Please appoint appeal courts in every tribe. See, so, so that, that was in the church in the wilderness. Israel is called the church in the wilderness. So I believe that some of this is coming into the church. Mm -hmm. This kind of, there, there's just something more. more. Uh, it was very effective for me. <laughs> and if it's effective for me, it's effective for you, and it's effective for the church. For, and, and it behooves us to, to, to humbly walk before God and find out how he works justice yes. and to read more of his law. Yes. You know, wear, wear out the dog, dog ears on Deuteronomy and realizing that in Christ that's fulfilled and sometimes we need the specifics to apply. So amen. 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 So that's my story of walking the Grand Ole Opry and being in the courts of heaven at the same time. So, Father, we want to pray now. We could end the video there. Thank you.